Welcome to MMA Dogs. My name is Hector, and as always, thank you for tuning in. A big thank you to all of our clients and all of our supporters. We appreciate your support, and uh, here we go, baby. We got UFC Fight Night 58. And this will be the last card before the new year. So uh, we've got, uh, uh, you know, this will be the last one of the year, and uh, it's got. To, we're gonna we're gonna make it worth our time, worth our energy, and worth the money. So for this one, let's go ahead and jump right into the first fight of the night. And uh, this is a very interesting matchup. Um, so we're starting off the, the party right here with, uh, Jake Collier versus Vitor Lex Luthor Miranda. So with Jake Collier, we got a guy making his debut and, um, and a guy just on a tear. I mean, this guy's been on a tear making his debut. Uh, the, the, um, the overall game, well-rounded. There's no part of this game that I that I've seen where I am just like, wow, you know, he's so good. But he's well-rounded, uh, decent, and uh, in my opinion, he could still use a little bit more time um, before jumping into the UFC. But with the amount of shows now and the amount of fighters in the UFC, it um, it's going to be something we see more and more of, and we've already seen a ton of it. So Jake Collier making his his debut. Now it's not an easy one because he's going to be flying down to Brazil and he's going to be going up against a guy in Vitor Miranda who is just possessed. In my opinion, he should be he should have been fighting at 185 pounds. Of course, for tough Brazil, he he was much heavier than that and uh and it showed uh it showed and it it shows when I was watching it. Um Shows that his his, uh, his his frame, his size just isn't you know against guys like Cara de Zapato and all these guys, these big guys, you know. But uh, he he stood his own ground. He made it all the way to the to the uh, to the final, and then lost to Cara de Zapato, which isn't surprising. I mean, what's more surprising is that he lasted a full full uh, fifteen minutes. So Vitor Miranda, uh, of course, he's got the extensive. Um, striking background, kickboxing background, and uh, and and in MMA, I think he has shown from his most recent fights that I get my hands on to the the newest fights that he has improved um, his his uh, his overall overall mixed martial arts game, especially the the uh, takedown defense, the grappling, and uh, for a guy of his frame, his size, to be able to defend some of those takedowns. Is, uh, is impressive. So for this particular matchup, I think that Jake is going to be uh, just a little bit overwhelmed with, with Vito Miranda and, and what he has to offer. And uh, I think Lex Luthor here will, get, will gain his first official UFC win. And, uh, you know, at those odds, I, I like the odds, um, which, which is second. I like Miranda here for the win, and the odds reflect it. So, if I had to put my money on it, it would definitely be on Vitor Miranda, and um, and it will he will be a betting pick. So, uh, starting off the night, I think he will win a decision. He could obviously end it inside with 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 a kick or a punch or a knee, but um, I like Vitor Miranda to win the decision. And another fight where we've got a. Uh, prospect this time it's the Brazilian against a uh, a UFC vet in Tim Means so we've got Marcio Liotto Alexandre Jr. and Tim the Dirty Bird Means now with Liotto he has that name because he comes from a karate family he's got the karate background and um, and he's a he's a good fighter he's a decent fighter but he does not have the well-rounded overall game that Tim Means has. Tim Tim Means has now become a, a tried and true uh, UFC vet. You know, he's 30 years old, and uh, when Tim Means fights guys the level of opposition that Liotto is, he beats him. 
when he fights guys higher than that, he loses. In this particular matchup um, means it's means fight to um, to win or to lose. And I think Tim Means here is going to be able to uh, use his overall MMA game um, if it means tying him up against a cage, clinching up with him, uh, beating him up in short range. Um, it, it's, it's Tim Means' fight to lose here. And uh, one of the things that I don't like about Lioto is his striking defense. Another thing I don't like is that he's Team Thiago Tavares now, and that that is a big concern. You know, like I say, like I always say in all the videos, you know, you always want to give respect to all the fighters and all the coaches and everybody that's involved in the game because it's, in my opinion, the the uh, if if you're doing all the right things, like for example, like GSP or some of these uh, athletes that are super committed. It's the most incredible sport in the world, in my opinion. I mean, it, not only does it entail psychological, physical uh, aspects, just unreal, and 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 uh, everything you do outside of the cage leading up to that moment uh, matters. So, um, much respect to everybody, of course, and uh, and you never want to bet more than you can afford to lose, and then you always want to check your local laws and government. Almost forgot to say that. I like to say it in every video. Um, so, Liotto, you know, he's training with this guy, T Tavares, who in my opinion is always bad news for these fighters because he's, he's just, he's just not the guy. I don't, I don't, I don't see him being, I don't know why he's in corners, just like I don't see why, um, why, what's his name? I'm forgetting his name, so many, so many names. Another, another Brazilian fighter who, who corners guys who I can't believe it. But anyway, so, Tim Means here, uh... It's his fight to win or lose. I think Tim Means will definitely win this fight. Um, I can't see it going to a decision, but I can see Tim Means um, winning this uh, everywhere it takes place. So just being savvier, that maybe even taking him down. Tim Means for the bet. Tim Means for the decision. If I had to bet it, I would go with Tim Means. And uh, that does it for that. Yuta Sasaki. Yuta Uka Sasaki. Versus Leandro Brodinho Isa. And uh, for this one, I really, really like Yuta Sasaki. This guy, just what he did to Roland DeLorme, I mean, man. What he did to Roland DeLorme just deserves just a, oh my goodness. He just completely dominated a guy who, Roland DeLorme is just underrated in in, in, uh, in grappling in his jiu-jitsu. I mean, he's just underrated and he... Sasaki made him look like nothing. And, uh, and Leandro Issa, you know, he's just a guy who, in my opinion, the UFC brought in. And uh, now he's on his way out. So um, I really like Sasaki here. First round submission. If I had to bet it, it would be Sasaki. Um, and uh, I'll definitely be betting him. So we'll go over that in a minute. And uh, the other thing is Sasaki could also knock him out. So knockout submission or a decision, it's going to be Sasaki. Very confident in him. The next one, we have Darren Elkins versus Hakran Diaz. Now, Diaz is coming off two losses. So he lost most recently to, uh, um, most recently he lost to Ricardo Lamas. And then before that, he lost to Nick Lentz. So Lamas and Lentz, two of the top guys at 145 pounds. I mean, just top, top guys. And now he's at home. He's got uh, Barrow also fighting on the same card. He's got the uh, the the experience of fighting two t top 145 pound guys, whereas with Darren Elkins, I see a slight decline in his overall fighting, his overall game. He's just the way he fights, uh, very grueling and, and, and just t takes a lot of punishment. And um, I think this is Hakran Diaz's fight here. I think Hakran will be able to defend the takedown. I don't believe Del Elkins will be able to to win two out of three rounds. I think it's Diaz who will be the one who wins two out of three, if not finish. But uh, if I had to bet it, it would be on Hacker and Diaz. I will be betting it. So uh, Diaz by decision. The next fight, this is a very interesting fight. And the fight I spent a lot of time on. Uh, ultimately, it's going to be a pass. I don't, I'm not going to bet it. 
And uh, if it wasn't short notice, I would be uh, taking and betting, probably betting Henato. But Tom Ninimaki for one last hurrah, just for the pick. Uh, like I said, do not bet. But Tom here, um, he stayed at home this time for this for this uh, for this fight. He's coming off two losses, and uh, you know it's just one of those things where he gets submitted by by uh, by Skelly. Get submitted by Backstrom. Two guys, two opponents who are underrated in my opinion. And then they've given to Henato. You know, Henato is, uh, he was supposed to fight, Tom was supposed to fight Honey Jason. Now he gets Henato, which is no easy task. And uh, and um, I still have to favor Tom here for one last one last fight. Uh, Henato, a very talented guy uh, on the feet, on the ground, but... Um, Taking the fight on short notice, and uh, Tom was back against the wall. You know, he knows if he doesn't win this, he's out. And uh, I, th I think Tom will, will have enough to win a decision here. If I had a bet, my money would be on Tom. But um, do not bet. I won't be betting it. Tom Ninimaki by decision. But I am looking forward to uh, Henato in the UFC for his next fight. And Tom, if he wins one more fight, if he loses, he, uh, that's going to be it for him. But do not bet. I'm not interested in the bet on that one. Marcos Rogerio de Lima versus Igor Poker Jack. Now, Pokryak here, uh, he, pff, he's lucky to be, to be even, he's lucky to even be getting this fight here. Um, lost, 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 lost. Now he's getting a guy in uh, in Marcos Rocherio de Lima, who is just a top guy, top prospect. I like de Lima here. I'll be betting him by knockout TKO, and I like it in round one. Poker Jack, I mean, what can be said about him? He's just, uh, I think his time has come. I think this will be it. Um, I think he... Uh, his chin, you know, here with the Lima and the power he brings, probably in, like I said, in the first round knockout. But, uh, you know, props to Poker Jack. I, I've always enjoyed watching him fight, but I think it's time, you know, it's time for him. This, this to me is like a heavyweight fight. It's not even like a light heavyweight. These guys are more like heavyweights. You can go in there, somebody's going to go out, and that's it. So, Daniel Serafian versus Antonio Dos Santos Jr., Daniel Serafian's stock could not be any lower right now. I mean, it could not be any lower. Coming off two losses. Big upset in Kichi Kunimoto. And uh, a split decision loss to Cesar Fejera. Uh, but I can't ignore what I've seen from, from Serafian, especially at 185 pounds. He lost to CB Dalloway via split. He lost to uh, Cesar Ferreira via split. Two very big guys. And uh, then he drops down to 170. He loses to Kunimoto. Obviously, the, the cut to 170 didn't do him well. He doesn't like it. He's back up to 185. And I think he's going to finish this uh, Anto Dos, Antonio Dos Santos Jr. I really like this, uh, this, this, this pick. I really like Serafian here. I think Serafian submits him in the first round. I'm very high on Serafian in this fight. I think he finishes, and uh, I think he does it impressively. And um, watching this Dos Santos guy fight, I'm not impressed one bit. He he has no business in the UFC just yet, but uh, but he does have business in there because he's gonna he's going to lose to my fighter here. And I, I like Serafian, Daniel Serafian here by submission round one. I uh, man this. I want to go heavier on it. I'm thinking about going heavier on it, but uh, sometimes when things look too easy, too good, um, lately, lately they haven't been going my way. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just be a little more reserved than I'd like to be on on Serafian. Still gonna put some some money on him. Don't get me wrong, but uh, Serafian by submission round one inside the distance, straight up uh, for the win. Another one here, Eric Silva stock. Is surprisingly low, and uh, Mike Rhodes is traveling down to Brazil, and it's not going to be his night. 
it's going to be Eric Silva's night. Eric Silva will finish him in the first round, maybe in the second by submission, knockout, TKO. Uh, the the last fight Silva had against Matt Brown, unbelievable. I mean, this kid just, there's just just power and just, oh, I'm just very impressed with this kid. I remember when he fought, I remember when he fought John Fitch almost two years ago. And uh, in my opinion, it was a little too too much too soon. Should have built him up a little bit slower, just a little bit. Not not maybe like maybe that that John Fitch fight was maybe like a fight, two fights away. But it's put him up against John Fitch, you know, a wrestler. Uh, it's a tough matchup. It's kind of sink or swim kind of matchup. Then he beat Jason High, okay. Then he loses Dong Hyung Kim. Nobody could have predicted Dong Hyung Kim to go in there and fight. That was the first fight where Dong Hyung Kim went in there and fought how he's fought recently, just throwing all caution out the window, just going in there and uh and it caught eric silva by surprise you know he got caught got knocked out then he knocks out tikeo's takenori sato okay well it's not very impressive whatever and then he gets knocked out by matt brown nearly knocking him out just hanging in there i mean just hurt but battered just hanging in there hanging in there and i think he's, he's 30 years old and uh i think he's about to hit his peak here about to hit his prime with Mike Rhodes, you know, I, I don't, I don't see it. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know who's moving, who's betting Mike Rhodes and who's moving, moving the lines. But I just, I don't see it. I mean, I could be, I could be wrong and maybe not seeing something. But if I haven't seen it now, I'm not about to see it in the next couple hours. So uh, I like Eric Silva here. I like him by submission round one. I, I'm behind him. My money's on him. And uh, whoo wee! Can't wait for this fight. I really can't. Think it'll be a big fight for Eric Silva, a big fight to shut everybody up, and uh, I can't wait to be on the on the right side, so to speak. And uh, for the next one, this is another fight I spent a lot of time watching, dissecting these two fighters: Rashid, the Highlander Magomeda versus Elias Shushu Silverio. Um, very interesting matchup here. On the feet, Magomeda has a big advantage, in my opinion especially with Elias not being as quick, as technical, as precise as Magomedov. Magomedov is just super, super accurate, very precise, very calculated, very smart fighter. Where Shushu, where Silverio, he's just a little bit wild, you know, just a little, a little bit too crazy for my liking. And um, he, he will, he ought to have the ability to take him down, but Magomedov could easily uh, just keep it upright, do his thing. Do his American top team thing win, you know, win a decision. That's what I think will happen ultimately. I think Magomedov will keep it on the feet, outstrike him, use his footwork, and uh, win a decision. So Magomedov for the win. Very interesting matchup, though, guys. 17-1 against 11-0. So Vario, watching his fights, uh, last he fought Ernest Chavez. Chavez, a guy who I think is a little bit underrated. And the last two guys before that, you know, it's Severino to me was more impressive than uh, than Valley Flag, but um, you know, these guys are very evenly matched. Very good matchmaking here by uh, by uh, Joe Silva, and uh, I really like this fight a lot. So I like Michael Medov though to win a decision. I'm not going to bet it. If I had to bet it, I would bet probably the prop on Michael Medov by decision. Or Actually, the price is pretty decent right now, so maybe just Magomedov by himself, or just just uh, Magomedov straight up. Moving on to the next one, Patrick Cummings versus Antonio Carlos Jr., better known as Cara de Zapato, shoe face. Very interesting matchup. Another one I spent a lot of time on. Very excited for this one. Um, do not bet. Do not bet. Pat Cummings should win this fight because he should be able to use his wrestling, should be able to take him down and control him. So if I had a bet, I would bet on Patrick Cummings. That being said, with Cara de Zapato, this guy uh, could be could be a star in the making. And I'm not going to count that out. He's training with Luis Doria, Junior Dos Santos. Excellent, excellent combination. 
But he's going up against a guy who has wrestling for for days. You know, Cummings has a lot of wrestling skill, and that's what it might come down to. It might come down to Cummings having the ability to take uh, Karai Zapato down and controlling him, and then rinse and repeat. And maybe Karai Zapato will train, will 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 threaten with some submissions. Maybe we'll threaten him on the feet. Anything could happen. But uh, I think Pat Cummings here for the for the win. Maybe maybe a prop on Caro de Zapato inside the distance. But then again, if Pat Cummings wins by TKO knockout, I wouldn't be surprised either. So it's a, just a very interesting matchup. And uh, we'll get better matchups to bet these guys on. So just going to pass it. Uh, uh, Mitchy, got my got a couple of straight hairs here from my haircut. Um so, yeah, Cummings by decision. Do not bet. If I had to bet it, it would be on Cummings. But, man, what an interesting matchup. I can't wait for this one. And then we get down to the last couple of fights. We've got Hennen Barrao versus Mitch Gagnon. This one, once again, spent a lot of time on it. Barrao, submission round one. Barrow's fight right here to get him back on there, get him back on the bantamweight scene. Gagnon is decent, you know, watching his fights. He uh, is better than I remembered him being, but it's Barrow's fight to, to, to show off, to be, um, to be uh, you know, to shine and, uh, and show that he's still one of the top guys in the world. So Barrow by submission round one. And last but not least, Lioto the Dragon Mashita versus C.B. Dalloway. For this one, at first glance, I was really excited for the Doberman because I started thinking to myself, oh, wow, I see I see paths to victory. This might be the poor man's Anderson Solo versus Chris Weidman. And uh, C.B. Dalloway being the poor man's Chris Weidman. But as I watched the fights, I saw two huge mistakes in la in TB Dalloway's last fight um and I, they just stick out so bad um uh, the, the biggest mistake that I saw where I was just like forget it it's not even worth not even worth it not even worth a flyer is CB Dalloway will close the distance at times and just use his body his hands down and they're not, you know, it's not like his hands are down because he's shooting for a takedown. He's got his hands out and can grab it. No, his hands are down and he just come, pops his head in like this. Chin out, just comes in like that. If you watch the Francis Carmont fight, you'll see it. I think he does it once in the second round. Hey, two, two times in the second round, once in the third round. But as soon as I saw that, I thought, my God, three times he did it, two times he did it. One of those times Machida is going to connect. And uh, so I think Machida will knock him out in the second round. Um, if CB didn't have those, those bad characteristics, those bad habits, then maybe. But uh, because Machida is old, is getting old, you know, let's face it, he's getting older. And uh, we know what happens when fighters get older. Um, but Machida has shown nothing but just, man, his whole UFC career, just, just a great career. Uh, he's at home. Um, last time he lost... Last time he lost championship fight, he his next fight he won. So uh, his fight, fight was Chris. Chris uh, his fight with Weidman, the championship fight he had with Chris Weidman, he showed more than than uh, than I expected. Nearly, you know, nearly uh, he went. He won. I think I believe he won the fourth and fifth round. In my in my eyes, I know what the judges said, but in my opinion, I think right. I think it was a very close fight. And Weidman's a man, you know. So. Um, Lots of respect for Machida. CB Dalloway's look nothing but impressive, but those things he those things he does where he closes it, jumps inside, and I mean it's just I wish I could show the video or something here, um, but I can't I can't back a guy who does that. If he wins, I really won't be surprised because if, when if the fight first got announced, I was thinking, wow, this is a fight CB might be able to win um, because he's looked so impressive lately. I mean, just look at some of the wins he's had. He uh, the the fight he fought with Serafian was good. The f he whooped up on Boach. He knocked out Caesar Fajeda. He decisioned Francis Carmont. Carmont's a very underrated guy. And uh, but 
don't think it's going to be enough, and I don't think Machida's going to look past him. So uh, those are two big things. It's not going to be enough. Machida's not going to look past him. If it was enough and Machida was going to look past him, then okay. But Machida by knockout round two. I'm not too eager to bet it other than a prop. So uh, so that'll be it. But uh, that wraps it all up. So let's go ahead and jump into the bets. There's a ton of them. So there are, I have 11, 11 betting picks. 11. Five stars, none, unfortunately. I'm not going to force it if it's not there. Four stars, medium to large plays. The first one, Hen and Barrow. No surprise. He's at minus 800. But um, sometimes these guys that are such favorites, I don't play. And, uh, and, and I... And, I try to analyze it to where it's like, okay, is this favorite worth it? Is this one not? Uh, is this guy a trap? I think Barrow's just going to dominate here, finish him. I won't even leave the first round. So uh, I love Henry Barrow here. Number two, Eric Silva at minus 305. I can't believe that price. Um, I understand why it's there, but I just I don't agree with it. Number three, Yuta Sasaki, minus 425. That's expected. Um, and the price on Silva, I mean, it's it's uh, it's low. I mean, I thought it would it should be higher, but that's okay. I'm not going to complain about it. Three stars. So those are four star plays. There's three of them. Three stars. First one, Daniel Serafian, minus 150. This one would probably be a would probably be a four star play, but lately the way things haven't been going my way, I'm just going to be more conservative with, with on this on this fight card. Henry Barrow wins inside the distance, minus 155. Eric Silva wins inside the distance, minus 155. Yuta Sasaki wins inside the distance, minus 156. So there are three props, all inside the distance, um, backing those. Vitor Miranda, plus 155. Hakran Diaz, minus 190. Tim Means, minus 225. And Marcos Horcherio de Lima wins by knockout TKO at minus 115. So those are the 11 plays. There are... Um, three four-star plays and eight three-star plays. Three four-star plays and eight three-star plays. Wow. A lot of picks here. I, as I was breaking them down and weeding out the ones that I don't think are worth it and just doing my whole analysis, those are the plays that I just could not look away from without feeling like, man, if I don't go with those, I'm going to, I'm going to be re regretful. And uh, if these lose, well, then... You know, it's on my it's on my own research on my homework that I did, so uh, that I can live with. But uh, these are the ones I believe are going to win. And uh, now, as far as how I broke them all down, so for my bets here, MMA dogs bets one unit equals one percent of the bankroll. The ratio uh, is going to remain the same. So, Hennen Barrow, Eric Silva, and Yuta Sazaki. All those three parlayed at the odds I gave out are equal to minus 118. So 3.4, 3.54 units to win three units. So 3.54 to win three. Daniel Serafian at minus 150, three units to win two. Barrow wins inside the distance and Silva wins inside the distance, both at minus 155. That it gives us plus 171. So half a unit to win 0.86. Barrow inside the distance, 0.78 units to win a half a unit. Silva inside the wins inside the distance, 0.78 units to win a uh, half a unit. Those are both at minus 155. Sasaki wins inside the distance at minus 156. This one's 0.78 units to win 0 0.50 units. So uh, very similar numbers there. For the uh, Silva and Barrow, it's actually 0.775, but I just rounded it up to 0.78. So, uh, so that makes up that makes all those bets there done there. So Vitor Miranda plus 155, 0 0.50 units, so half a unit to win 0.78 units. Rogerio de Lima by knockout TKO minus 115, 0.58 units to win half a unit. And Hakran Diaz at minus 200 and Tim Means at minus 225 gives us plus 117, 0 0.78 units to win 0 0.91 units. So that does it for all those bets there. And then moving on to the round robins. Oh man, that's a lot. That's a lot to read. 
A round robin of two six parlays at 0 0.08 units each. Total bet is 0.48 units to win 4.39 units. Barrow, Silva, Sasaki, and Serafian. All by submission. Barrow is plus 300. Silva is by submission is plus 180. Sasaki is plus 165. And Serafian is plus 235. All by submission. All round robin of twos. Another round robin of twos. Six parlays at 0 0.08 units each. Total bet is 0 0.30 units to win 3.33 units. So this one is Miranda by decision plus 445. Diaz by decision plus 135. Magomedov by decision plus 190. And Means by decision plus 247. The grand total for my MMA dog bets is 12.02 units to win 17.27 units. So that wraps it all up. And uh, I am very excited for this last card of the year. Looking forward to 2015. Right off the bat, we'll get right to UFC 182. So that'll be really exciting. And uh, I hope all of you guys have happy holidays. Have a merry, merry Christmas. Get to spend all the time with your loved ones. And uh, I will see you guys in 2015. Thank you guys for all of your support in 2014, and uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, we're looking forward to some really big things in 2015, and uh, I can't get, I can't wait to get to it. I can't wait to do it to it. So, hope you guys have a great holiday season, and I will talk to you guys in 2015. So long.